I appreciate you guys coming. Thank you for moving it up for me so I can make my plane to go out recruiting. <laughs> so, but uh, obviously, just, just was just told we're, number one, we're on, on behalf of all of uh, Baylor football and the athletic department. Uh, we're obviously excited uh, to have the chance to go uh, play in the uh, uh, Texas Bowl, and um, um, it'd be just a tremendous opportunity for us to go play in Houston, play in front of our family and friends. And um, I know how excited our players are. Uh, really, really, you know, as rumors are flying around, I, I found out when you guys found out, I was finding out on Twitter and things like that. But our players all day, just to see the joy and the excitement and, and how much, uh, you know, for a lot of the older guys to have a chance to play their last game in Houston uh, was, was really exciting. So, you know, we, we want to thank Academy. We want to thank the Texas Bowl. And uh, we also want to thank um, – um, all of our family, friends, all of Baylor Nation that I know will come to the game and uh, support this team. I just found out we're playing Vanderbilt and uh, obviously a uh, chance to play against an SEC team. I have had a chance to coach against Coach Mason before. He's a tremendous coach. And uh, uh, their quarterback, Kyle Shermer, I think when we were at Temple, we were maybe his first offer. I've known him for a long time. So we know it'll be a great challenge, but uh, one that we're excited about and looking forward to. So with that, I'll see what questions you got. Now, is this a, is this a pretty ideal situation staying in Texas, like you mentioned, the fans and that kind of thing? Yeah, you know, um, I've I've been just excited about the opportunity, and so, um, but I think I was out recruiting in Houston last week, and as I got around and and I think the the totality of it really started to hit me in terms of just the opportunity to 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 go down and be in front of um, you know our fans and, and all the alumni that we have you know, in the Houston area. Uh, the fact that people all from, you know, B Baylor fans from all across the state can come down there uh, to, to play in front of the high school coaches and, and, and recruits that will have a chance to to see us, you know, if we hold open practices. You know, I didn't realize it, but 79% of our roster is from the state of Texas. And so um, I think that was just – it just really hit me, like, what this really means, to, for you know, to, to be able to stay in state. But to be able to go someplace new, to go down to Houston and enjoy all that Houston has to offer – I think is, uh, you know, is really exciting. And so um, I'm fired up. I'm fired up that, you know, to, to, to go spend Christmas in a hotel. <laughs> you know, uh, those are things that as a player I got used to at Penn State. And as a coach, you know, playing, playing in these bowl games, it's, uh, it's ideal. Do you think that Hurd and Gaylitz, uh will be ready? Well, Gaylitz tore his ACL, so he's, I mean, he's done. You know, he, um, and I'll say that's, um, I meant it when I said it. That was one of the most courageous things I've ever seen a guy do. You know, he he, he tore it in pregame, and we, obviously we didn't know it was torn, right? But it just didn't feel right. But it didn't feel the same as before, and didn't feel like he could kick off. And Jay stepped in and did a nice job kicking off. And then Drew went out there and punted and averaged 40 yards a punt. You know, I mean, um, and then just when we got the news two days later, I mean, I, I know I was crushed, so I can't imagine how he felt. I, know I, talked, I had a chance to talk to Drew's dad and. Um, you know, but he he went out on a high note, so I, I know he won't. Uh, I know he won't be available. And um, you know, in terms of medically, the other guys, Jalen and some of the other guys, I'm not sure yet. You know, we'll have to kind of wait and see. You know, how guys are. Well, what's Jalen's deal? He, he just hurt his knee in that game. So um, he, um, you know, I, I told, as I said, I told Jalen in the first quarter. I said, but you probably shouldn't play in this game now. You know, you have he's got a big NFL future ahead and hurt his knee and he wouldn't come out, you know. I mean, he, we were going to play him a lot at tailback, and so he really couldn't play tailback. But, you know, he we went out there and had four catches. He blocked, you know. Um, um, I thought that was one of the, you know, kind of along with Drew, one of the more selfless, you know. And, and that's the thing about Jalen Hurd. You know, people ask me all the time. There's what, From whatever happened at Tennessee, people ask me about him. Yeah, I, I don't want anybody ever ask me about him again. Now, that guy played. Not, not a lot of guys would play. Um, after getting hurt with the with the future he has, but he wanted our team to win that football game, and he went out there and and he didn't just you know say hey give me the ball. I mean he blocked, he played hard, and uh, it, it meant a, I know it meant a lot to me and it meant a lot to his teammates. So um, yeah, so I'm I'm kind of still waiting to see you know how healthy he'll be. I'm not sure how much you could actually do down there, but does it help in terms of recruiting too? Just being in Houston, being oh close yeah. To, yeah yeah I think. Um, I think when you know one of the one of the one of the things about the way we try to run things and the way our players do things is that when people come watch us practice, I think you know you think they they usually leave feeling like you know it's uh, a program that knows how to you know knows how to practice knows how to prepare, things are done right things are done first class our guys are first class and so you know the more high school coaches that we can get there you know we'll have it all open the more recruits that we can get there 
Um, I think the better it is for us. And it just can, you know, just continuing to be in that market, you know, um, even as we've gone out to recruit now, uh, you know, uh, I think people seeing that, hey, you know, we went from one win to now going into a bowl game. People see what the way that, you know, we're trending. Um, that's been good. So I think to be down there and, you know, be in the news and be in the media and not just the way we play in practice, but, you know, we're going to, we're going to try to go be elite at everything we do. If, you know, community service, the different events, you know, we're going to want to make sure that we represent uh, Baylor uh, as a university and as, as an institution the right way. And so um, I think that all that ties over into, uh, into recruiting. Was there a moment this season where you actually, you know, realized or, or just, um, that, you know, that a bowl game was within reach? Yeah, Matt, I, I expected to go to one. Um, I said it, you know, uh, I would say that probably beating Oklahoma State was a defining moment for that, you know, because that gave us three three cracks down the stretch to do it. And then, you know, obviously, you know, that, that last win um, was it. But I would say that Oklahoma State win was probably a really pivotal moment for, for this football team. Um, just... You know they had, you know they just won the week before and beaten Texas, and and for us to come back to you know the way those guys did was was big, and so that really kind of put us in position where I said, hey, you know we're gonna have multiple opportunities to do this, but um, you know I think it's a good lesson for our players. You know you look back and you say, it was the Texas Tech? No, it was beating Abilene Christian. You know it was beating all the win at the end of the year. The wins don't count more or less, and so you know we've got to now become a team as we move forward that that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we won six games, we lost four, and we got beat twice. You know, Oklahoma and West Virginia, you know, kicked our, you know, kicked our doors down. And they, you know, they're two of the top teams in the country. The other four games, you know, we feel like if we play a little bit better here, a little bit better there, we have a better chance in those games. And so there's a lot of lessons to take from the year. But um, that Oklahoma State win was probably a pivotal one in getting to this point. What was the players' reaction when they found out the Texas Bowl? You know, I, they're not here, so I don't know. <laughs> um, but I, but, but no, they've been texting. I mean, they've been on me all day. I mean, I, they, they, I think they think I have more information than I do. My son, because we've been recruiting all day, um, is like, you have to know. I said, so I swear I don't. But um, but it was, so it was cool just to see the, you know, as I said, just the fact that how excited they are to play, to stay in Texas and go to Houston. That's all I hear about all the time from the Houston guys is H Town and the H and this and that. They love their city. And I think that's really cool that we're going to go back and um, play in their hometowns and how, how awesome it is for their their families and their parents. And I think that's a big part of this for a lot of our guys. They've been through a lot and they have a chance to play um, home. They have the chance to play in their home state. They have a chance to play in front of their family and friends. Um, I know they're excited about that. You talked about it before, but how important, can you reiterate how important this is for these seniors that have been through all of this? Well, um, I think it's I think it's 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 so important for our seniors in a couple really for a couple reasons right I mean um, I'd like to finish with a winning season with a winning record had a chance to get to seven wins to go I think we went plus five this year you said something what'd you say to me the most pass from most in the country with yeah Florida and Syracuse plus five so going plus five wins ties you know tied us with Florida and Syracuse as he said for most wins so I'd like to go plus six you know and um, but I think you know I think it's also just uh, the thing that I'm most proud about about this team is how they've kind of been a team. You know, we had, I probably had like 16 or 17, maybe 18 of our players at my house last night because uh, we were waiting for the recruit. The recruits, recruits come to my house and they were all there sort of first and we were watching the Alabama game. And, you know, it's just kind of cool for me to see how old guys, young guys, you know, guys of, you know, different races, different positions, different places, kind of all hanging out. And that's a credit to our seniors. They've, they've, they've been so good about involving everyone in the team. And so for them to have one more chance to go out and play as a team, I think is really, really important. And then I don't know that anyone can ever really understand all that they have been through. I can't. And I've just been on the front lines of it for about two years now. But I can't, or I guess, yeah, two years, but I can't understand everything that they've been through. And so um, to come out where it's a positive story and there's these, you know, all the all the tweets today are, are happy and the guys are fired up and excited, um, they did that and they earned it and they, they did it through hard work. And that's, you know, if you learn a lesson coming out of our program, it's that, you know, hard work isn't punishment. And if you want something in life, you have to earn it. And, you know, this is, for me, it's just like a step, like, okay, we got to six and six, we got to a bowl game. But for them, it's an accomplishment. And, um, you know, so I'm just proud of our seniors. And I think I've said that a lot of times. It might be boring to everybody, but, like, you know, Tyquan Thornton's never going to know what it's like to not go to a bowl game. He better not. You know, this better be the, this better be the, the standard. And um, that was done by, by those seniors. Have you seen some of the early steps of leadership 
in your junior class after you've talked to them about what this means and start to take over? Yeah, and um, you know, so we practiced Friday and we practiced Saturday, and we practiced. Um, you know, Friday was just all the really young guys. You know, so like a lot of the juniors, the Clay Johnsons, the guys with a thousand reps. You know, they didn't practice at all, and but I had all those other guys coach. And then yesterday, I had just the seniors not practice, but all the other guys. And um, yeah, you can see you can see guys understanding that you know that there's a certain way to do things, and now it's our way. And you can see those guys demanding that. And you can see those guys holding each other accountable. And um, um, I like our junior class, the guys that are going to be seniors. I think they're going to you know you know Sam Tecklenburg up front on the offensive line. I mean, he's he's been a leader, but now. It, you know, the last couple of days it's been his team, you know, and Clay Johnson's been his team and Jordan Williams and Blake Lynch and, and many more. So um, I think you've definitely seen that. And now what we'll have to do, though, is we'll have to, because I've been talking about next year, next year, next year with all the young guys. Now that we have a bowl opponent, we'll bring it, bring it back in. And this is about this team and going 1-0 against Vanderbilt and ending this season the right way. But I've been really pleased with that, that, that junior class and the things that they've done. Now, once you... You knew you were at a bowl game. Some are slotted, some are invitational based on the playoff. Once you got it and you knew you were going and you knew it was the Texas Bowl, did you care who you played? Oh, no. I mean, I, I, I thought it was really important for us. That we, I thought it was really cool for us to play an SEC team. Um, you know, that's, that's a premier conference. And I thought, you know, I thought it would be really important for us to go get a, a Power 5 win um, and, 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 and have a chance to do that, you know, important. So... Um, I, I was excited about that, but even as we're walking out here, I was kind of joking with him because as I was leave, left my office, I still didn't know who we were playing. So I was going to give you guys a bunch of coach speak. You're like, you know, hey, they're, they're, they're a heck of a football team, not knowing who it is, let you insert it later. But, but you know, I think the respect I have for Vanderbilt, you know, I, I, Coach Mason, Derek Mason, now they, like they had to win their last two games to get bowl eligible, right? I mean, like they, they went out and earned this. They're going to be excited to play, and we're playing one of the best quarterbacks in the, in the country. And, um, you know, they know how to play defense, and so I think all those things will be uh, will be really good for our team. You know, we need to go out and defend a really good quarterback, and we need to see if we can play better up front versus a really good def SEC defensive line. So I was excited about those matchups, but at the end of the day, the, you know, the issue is always us, and you know, I, I can't control who we play. I can't control. You know, I just I wanted to make sure that our guys were in this moment, but. I think the matchup for us is a good one in terms of it's going to make us have to develop some areas that have not been our strengths. Because if you don't if you don't play well on the offensive line again, I, I was up there watching. I've been this morning after recruiting. I've been watching Vanderbilt, and I was watching Auburn. And I, was, I was just trying to get a feel for everybody. And uh, if you don't if you're not good up front, you're going to have a hard time versus any, any Coach Mason team. Matt, you kind of answered it, but how do you balance that development of those younger guys? and then just getting ready for a game. Yeah, the East Friday, Saturday practices during recruiting are more about development. Um, but then once we get through, you know, this weekend coming up, um, now it'll, then it'll become a bowl week. So we'll do, we'll do a bowl prep, then give them a couple days, and then do another bowl prep. So we'll do two weeks to get ready for the game. And, um, you know, so right now guys have a lot of things they have to handle. They have to handle finals. They have to, we have to finish well academically. We have to continue to, you know, do the right things off the field. Um, so we can't have any distractions, you know, and they have to stay in shape. <laughs> so those are the things I'm asking them to do. I'm not, we're not practicing during the week. The coaches are recruiting. We're in, we're all over the country right now. Um, but on the weekends, we need to focus on, you know, developing. And then after these, after this past next week, and we'll hit, kind of hit more into a, hey, let's get ready for bowl prep. And um, that'll, that'll be that last week, the 15th. What are the goals of these bowl practices for you? To, to try players at new positions. Um, and to get guys reps, you know, at the end of the day, if we can get 15 practices getting ready for this bowl game, it's like another spring practice. And so, um, you know, I think a lot of that, you know, when people say, well, what is that? It's just confidence for the guys, you know, like um, if I'm Braylon Taylor and I just redshirted the whole year, played a couple plays here, a couple plays there with the redshirt rule, if I can get 15 practices now, if I can get 15 practices again in the spring, by the time next season comes around, I'm a lot further along than I would have been. And so, you know, I got after the young guys on Friday. And there's recruits standing around. You'd think I'd be shaking. No, I wanted, I wanted to, even though you're not playing, I want you to understand that, you know, I want them to feel the pressure and have to go out and produce and perform. And I was proud they responded and they did. And so, um, you know, we want to get to the point where there's one standard, whether you're 
when you go out to be the middle linebacker at Baylor, whether you're the fourth team guy getting a chance to go with the ones or you're the you're Clay Johnson, when you go out to be the quarterback, when you go out to be the left tackle, there's one one standard for how we want you to play. And so having the older players watch the young players, you know, they're putting that pressure on them. Hey, run to the ball. Hey, and that, you know, for guys that have been on the scout team all year, now they're having those opportunities. To me, it, it makes them tougher, but also builds their confidence. And that's what that's what you need in football to be good. You just need confidence. And, um, you know, that that's what we're trying to get done right now. So, But we're also moving some guys around, trying some guys at new, new positions, um, you know, making sure that, um, you know, that, that guys, this is a great time to see, hey, what's my best chance to go be an NFL player? Sometimes you might be really good at your position, but another position might be even better. So we're trying to utilize some of that as well. On that confidence note, how big was Blake Lynch getting that interception in the Tech game, just kind of seeing the payoff yeah. to the work? Because, you know, we went in that game knowing, like, you know, um, Coach Kingsbury's offense, like that's a big thing that they're going to do over and over again. And we worked it and we stressed it and Blake – Almost had one, then he almost had another one. And I remember Phil was on the sideline saying, hey, you're going to pick one off. And uh, for it finally to happen was awesome. And it was timely, <laughs> you know. And um, I know for him, you know, so I, I saw maybe it was one of you guys on Twitter, so I don't know if someone had a, his stat line, you know, you know like you know, carries and, and tackles and receptions and now an interception. He's done a lot of things in his time here. And, um, you know, but I think he's settled in. I think he's seeing – He's one of those guys who's seeing the progress. So I, that was a, a great culminating moment for him of all the work because, you know, it looks like just a pick, but there's hours and hours of work that he's put in to get to that point. And now, you know, when that happens, you hope that he's thirsty for it and wants to work even harder because he knows I can do this. And so um, that's what's so good about the bowl game. Now Blake has one more chance to go out and make another step. And, you know, the step isn't about winning the game. You know, the step is over the next, over the next, you know, however many weeks trying to hold, take a whole step as a team and then go find a way to win the game. And uh, if we can do that, then we'll be, be much better off next year. With Drew out, what will you do at punter? Uh, you know, Connor Martin obviously did it all last year, so he should be ready. And then Isaac Power, you know, we recruited him for a reason. So, um, you know, in fact, when, when, when Drew got hurt in pregame and we weren't really sure what it was, I said, can someone call Isaac? So maybe he's at the game, you know, and he was in Colorado. So he wasn't at the game, obviously. But... Um, <laughs> You know, so this will this will this will be an opportunity over the next however many weeks for Isaac to you know go out there and see if he can be the starting punter this game, and that will hopefully give him some momentum in the next season. And you know, I thought last one of the things for O'Connor last year is when he was kicking off and punting and kicking, or when he was just you know punting and kicking, his only kick wasn't always just a field goal. You know, he was able to get out there and get a punt. You know, kind of keep himself in the game. So if if, if we need Connor to do it, he'll do it. And then Jay, I thought did a pretty good job kicking off in the dome. So. Um, the majority of the Big 12, you know, made bowls, and Oklahoma being in the college football playoff. How big is that for the conference that they were able to to make it into the type the Final Four? I was fired up for Oklahoma that they were able to make it in the Final Four. You know, um, and I just, you know, it's just not seen enough yet. But it, like to 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 play every team in your conference every year is so hard. Like you just get to know each other so well, and like you don't ever have the best team in the league roll off your schedule. And you go back and look at. You know, whether it was, you know, the, the, you look at the Big Ten, you, you, like years where some teams sometimes have a great year, some of the best teams in the league, they don't have to play them that year. And you look at the championship games that people played, take the SEC out of it, a lot of them were really good teams versus unranked teams or versus seven and five teams. In our league, man, you have to play everybody, and then you have to have a rematch and play the second best team. It's really, really hard, and Oklahoma did it. And um, I would have – I have so much respect for the way Kyler Murray plays the game. Um that for him to not have a chance to go out and play against Alabama to me would have been a travesty as a football fan. I want to see Kyler Murray in the college football play as a fan. And that's how much respect I have for them. And so um, this, this is a really hard thing that we do, you know, in our, in our conference. A lot of other conferences, you know, you play four non-conference games. We play three, we play each other. So, you know, there's a lot of teams that can kind of cannibalize each other this year. We end up with a lot of six and six teams. Um, so I'm glad the payoff was there that Oklahoma got in and they got the benefit of the doubt. And, um, you know, I think they should. But based upon what they did last year, they were a play away from beating Georgia and playing in the final game. And so um, they earned the right to be there, and I'm glad they were there. And then, you know, I'm excited to see all the rest of the teams in the conference go out and play against these other conferences because, you know, being in the Big 12 for two years now, I, I, I recognize how good the teams are and I recognize how good the offenses are. And, and uh, so I'm excited to see, you know, our league go out and play other leagues and, and see what the record is at the end. Do you think Oklahoma's going to beat Alabama? I have no idea. 
I think it'll be a fantastic game, and um, I have immense respect for Alabama, and I have immense respect for Clemson and Notre Dame, and uh, but I also just know I just know after playing Oklahoma, you know, what they can do, and um, just as a football fan, I just want to see it. It's going to be awesome to watch. All right. You try to get you try to get a bunch of angry people tweeting at me. You ain't. <laughs> I ain't gonna have it.